Skybrook 85, back for part three of introduction to whitetail deer hunting, and this is clothing and equipment. And as you can see, big pile of stuff over here, all kinds of things. Hunter B over here, not too much. And really what you want to do is find a nice medium of in-between uh, and it really depends on how long you're going to stay out in the woods is really how much equipment do you need to take with you at the time. Uh, there's a couple basic things that you absolutely do need and really for this series I'm going to concentrate on firearm season or seasons and that either means a rifle which we have over here, shotgun that we have over here. First thing that you need is your license and uh, that's the biggest thing that you need uh, when you're going out there uh, because that's going to give you permission to hunt on whether it's private land, state land, state parks, state forests, federal land. You're going to need a state license uh, that you're going to have to purchase and check those game websites on your state like Pennsylvania uh, PA State Game Commission, uh, Delaware, Denrec, and you have to see what it's going to take you to get that license, how much it's going to cost. That cost varies uh, from state to state. Uh, I'm not even going to give you an average because there's such a fluctuation in between. So really what do you need? What do you need to wear when you're out there? What do you need uh, to take with you to, to have a successful hunt? And again, two schools of thought and mine really those two schools vary on how long you're going to be out there. If you're going to be out there all day, well, you're probably going to need pile A over here. You're only going to be out there for a few hours. You probably only really need this over here. And uh, in our club, there's a guy that says all you need to do to go deer hunting: a rifle, one shell or a bullet, and a Mountain Dew. That's all you need to do is go out there and. He's got a point. That's really all you need besides some of the safety orange and, and things like you need like that. Simplified, of course, but really you don't need a lot of gear to get out there to get started. Remember, if you're, if you're just getting started in this, you don't want to go out and spend thousands of dollars on equipment that you may or may not need. You kind of build that up. You work into it. You gradually uh, acquire all this stuff first. Again, most likely you're going to need your orange hat because, uh, again, most of the states require that you have at least 300 inches of fluorescent orange, which even though this is camouflage, uh, has the camouflage powder, it does count as fluorescent orange on your head, chest, and back. Uh, the other thing that you're going to need, and again, this is the vest, fluorescent camouflaged you're gonna to need to have this on especially gun season now bow season and again I'm really not going to get into it you don't need it but gun seasons firearm seasons you're gonna need your orange your chest back and head I like taking a headlamp out with me uh, so when I'm coming or going out in the morning coming in in the evening I have the headlamp on and this one Actually, a few colors, but I like it red headlamp because they say red doesn't scare the deer as much as a, as a white light will. Now, you're going to be making noise out there. You're going to be crunching, kind of going in in the morning. But uh, having the red, uh, it's just one of those things. I like to have it. So a, a flashlight, a headlamp. A headlamp, again, is nice because then you can, you can carry your, you know, depending on whatever you take with you, your firearm. Uh, you bottle a do, you can carry those a little bit easier. Everybody knows how to dress, really, uh, for cold weather. Uh, is it, uh, is it uh, very cold out there? Do I need to dress in layers? Do I need insulated un underwear? Do I need you know, heavier jeans? Uh, do I need maybe a vest under my jacket? And uh, you're pretty familiar, I'm sure, on how to dress in the cold and how to be out there in the cold. So I'm not going to go too, too far into that, 
but you know, as they say, dress in layers and uh, just make sure you have enough stuff. And when you're walking into the woods, don't pile everything onto you. Don't have like six layers on you and you got to walk a mile to your stand. And by the time you get there, you're drenched in sweat. And then you sit there and all of a sudden you start cooling down and you start freezing again. So it's kind of dress right, that insulated stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll wear the kind of the tech gear that they have out now so the, the perspiration wicks away from your skin a little bit. I think that's really what you want to go ahead and, and kind of look for. Some type of uh, some type of insulated underwear that keeps you, keeps you warm and again wicks that sweat away from you again, that perspiration. Uh, and again, I'm not going to go everything into everything that I have in here. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on just one second. You want to see everything that's in this pack? You want to see everything that, that I take out there when I'm going from dusk to dawn? do have a video out there. Uh, basically, same spot down in the basement. I go through all that stuff. Everything in the backpack. Everything that I take with me uh, out there. Uh, the only thing is... I'm wearing sunglasses in the in the video, and I'm in the basement here, so try not to give me uh, as much grief as everybody else that's uh, watched that video does. But uh, if you really want to see an expanded thing on everything that I keep in that pack and why when I'm out there all day, it's certainly out there for you. I think one of the things between the rifle, your your cartridges, and the dew is a knife. You always want to have your own knife with you. If you do happen to harvest a deer, and somebody goes ahead and does that gutting process for you the first time, you don't want to say, can you use your knife? Get yourself a nice quality knife. Again, that the blade isn't too long. This, I don't know, it's probably three and a half inches at the most. This blade, this is a solid knife. This does, it's not a lock knife. It doesn't fold. Uh, as far as whitetail, this is as big a knife as you would ever possibly need. And here's the... Uh, rifles and again there's not that much difference between the style of these two it really depends on the regulations in your state whether you need to have a rifle or a shotgun the bolt action meaning this is on safe and of course it's unloaded basically that's how you load the bullet into it it has a magazine that would go up in here your cartridges would feed up through that and into your barrel and as, and as you can see, this is this is a, uh, a 308 caliber. This is a 30 caliber bullet, 308, basically a military round. And I got it just because it's a good round to, to carry. And uh, just the availability, there's always 308 rounds around. Anything, I think, from probably 24, 25 caliber on up is a good good caliber to have. There's a lot of things out there on YouTube and Google that will explain the caliber and the different size, uh, what that means, uh, the higher caliber, basically the bigger the diameter of your bore is going to be. Uh, again, this is a shotgun, 20 gauge, Savage 220. I have videos out there on that. And again, it's the same thing, works the same way, bold action, and slide your basically in this case your shotgun shell up from the magazine here's the magazine for this one the shotgun shell it will slide that up in into the barrel be ready to fire and then I'll get into a little bit of safety on our next next course I'll probably have these back out again uh, clothing wise I have this on this is the, again the digital that uh, kinda came out the same same time that did, reach over here for a little bit more. A few examples. Some of the some of the nice clothing. I think this is from Cabela's. I, I always like this because there's a fairly good contrast between the lights and the darks and the camouflage. Now, again, starting, do you need camouflage? You can go out there in a nice brown pair of khakis, maybe a brownish t-shirt, black, uh, not t-shirt, but jacket and things like that. Make sure you have your orange. But, uh, so, do you need it? No. But, this is just one of those things. Remember deer see in black and whitish, sort of a, a black and white tonish. They don't see in full color. 
Uh, so basically what you're trying to do is sort of make yourself invisible, break up your outline. And again, this, uh, this one from Cabela's kind of does that nicely. Here's a, just another color. And I think this is, I think it's like bottomlands or grasslands. It's kind of a little bit more for duck, but it, it works well for, uh, for deer too. Uh, you can see it's not quite as broken up as the last one was. And uh, the last is kind of your uh, typical camouflage that you'll see. Most guys have something that's going to look about like this. These last two items, these last two things, got them at the Goodwill, two bucks a piece. But that's where you want to find some things, things like that. You want to go to thrift stores, you want to check your Goodwills, you want to check yard sales, uh, you want to check end of the season sales. Another thing, here's some uh, camo pants. And again, these are thin layer, a little bit warmer weather. Uh, but this will probably take you down to about uh, 35 degrees and be comfortable with maybe some, uh, some nice long johns underneath. Got these end of the season just a few weeks ago at Walmart for, I'm thinking it was eight bucks. You know, th th this is a real nice pattern. This is mossy oak, so this isn't some kind of cheap thing. But, uh, you know, this is, this is going to fit nice. Uh, nice camouflage pattern on here. And uh, well, this is Break Up Country. It tells you what it is right there. So, you look at a couple of these things. And I got uh, the start, 10 bucks, $8 for pants, $2 for the shirt. It's a nice matching set, just about. And uh, you want again, you want to have a nice warm jacket, uh, whether you want to get it in brown and put the vest on, or you want to get a or fluorescent jacket like that, and uh, you can go ahead and wear that. And again, we're talking about firearm seasons, and you're definitely going to need that. Uh, if you're familiar with this, this is the Air, Air Force BDU or ACU. I'm not sure which which one it is, but. Uh, but these are actually, when if you're in a tree stand, these are pretty nice also. Uh, I got these at the local Army-Navy store. Uh, we have the, the air base up in Dover, the Air Force Base. And uh, a lot of guys, when, they, when they're when they done their enlistment, they'll go to the Army-Navy store, they'll turn their stuff in, and the guy sells it there for a pretty reasonable price. Uh, so check your Army-Navy store if you have any of those around. Two style boots, and again, really depends on your area. If you're in a kind of a wet area, a little bit swampy, a lot of creeks you got to cross, you may want to go with this is a muck boot. Uh, problem with the muck boots is they're not quite as warm as this heavy type boot, and this is, uh, I can't even remember what this brand was. These are so old, they're probably older than you are. The only thing that I did is I, I replaced this insole. Uh, a couple times, but, but these are nice. These keep your feet warmer than I think a muck does when it starts getting down there below 25 degrees or so. Uh, they're kind of they're a little bit nicer, and uh, these have the rubber on the bottom, leather on the sides, and of course that nice removable liner in there. And again, these are neoprene, more neoprene, uh, a little bit lighter as far as weight goes. I don't have my scale out right now, but I can tell the difference. These are a little lighter. These are my sort of lighter weight, and I have actually another pair of these that are heavier. They have more uh, thin slate in them. So uh, I like the muck boots. Uh, I think they, they come in handy in those, those really sloppy areas because you can go water all the way up to here, and your feet's going to stay dry, whether you, know, you go about three, four inches, and you're going to start getting in there where that water's going to trickle in. Uh, when it gets a little bit colder out, Again, this is a, I don't know what they call these, the, the hand, hand warmer, hand muff. Basically, it goes around your waist, kind of sits down there, and you just stick your hands in there. This thing, when it's cold out there, I love these things. You can put two zipper pockets, you can put hand warmers in here, and your hands, basically all you need is very light gloves on your hands. Just keep them in here. This is really the way to go. Uh, I think all the guys up at the uh, cabin have these. You know, you got your baseball style hat, you could have the beanie style hat, and again, really, you know how to keep yourself warm at this point in your life. I'm sure you do. Even if you're 15, you know how to dress warmly. And that really, really matters is, 
you know, do you want to go with a baseball style hat? Not going to be as warm, but it's going to keep that sun off your face. And we have my LED light up here. Keeps that light out of my eyes. We'll just go with the, the old beanie. That's certainly going to keep the ears warmer and, uh, and keep you nice and warm. Or what I like to do when it's really cold, you know, the, basically the combination of both. You're going to find all the rules that you need to know uh, in these. Basically, your this is the hunting and trapping digest. I forget what Delaware calls it. Uh, well, yeah, Delaware hunting and trapping. This one's the 2013 edition. And again, one for Delaware, one for Pennsylvania. It tells you everything in here that you need to wear as far as your fluorescent orange uh, to, to, again, meet those requirements. And if a game warden sees you without it, he may, and he probably will, uh, give you some type of ticket uh, for not wearing the proper orange in the woods. I got a lot of videos out there on the rifles, shotguns, on my channel. Uh, Again, I think I have two parts on this Savage. Really going to tell you everything that you need to know. There's tons of videos out there. Uh, I don't really... Th I have one, you know, a couple maybe shooting this, but not uh, not really explaining it too much. But it's a Browning 8-bolt Savage. This is a Savage 220. Uh, but go out there and explore some of those things. And that's what you're going to do when you're talking to people who you want to go with. And again... You don't want to spend a lot of money right up front. And you may say, hey, can I borrow something? Are you a shotgun only state like Delaware? Or are you a rifle state like Pennsylvania in most sections of it? There are some sections where you do have to use a shotgun in Pennsylvania. But check those rules. Don't buy a lot of stuff initially. Again, try to borrow a firearm. And the one thing you have to do, get out there at the range and you got to shoot. You gotta shoot it, you gotta shoot it, you gotta shoot it until you feel that you know everything about it, that you're comfortable shooting, and you can put those every shot. And most deer shots at again our states are probably from 30 to 75 or 80 yards. So if you can put your shots in an area like this at 100 yards, you're gonna be perfectly fine. You're gonna be perfectly fine. So get out there and bar that firearm, get to the range, have some proper people with you that's instructing you on how to use this particular firearm, and get out there and shoot and shoot until your shoulder starts getting sore, and then go out a few weeks later and go ahead and shoot some more. Uh, very important that you know your firearm, you know your equipment. Uh, we're going to get into uh, the shot in, in I think uh, two chapters coming up very important that you place that shot in the correct area on the deer so get out there and know your equipment and as far as all the other stuff the clothes and again as long as you were meeting the get out of here as you're meeting the fluorescent orange requirements you can have whatever clothes on you want there's a lot of things as far as you know People say that, oh, you can't have certain clothes because deer, deer can see them easier. You know, it really depends whether you're in a tree stand, if you're in a box blind, which a box blind, most of the time it's going to be all the way around you. Uh, you know, basically, you're going to just, the, your head's sticking out, so the deer's not going to see what clothes you, you're going to have on. Uh, so, so, start easy. Again, go to your thrift stores, go to your yard sales, go to your Army Navy, go to the Goodwill. Sales at, at places like Walmart and uh, Tractor Supply and a few of the other places, uh, Cabela's and Dex and all that end of the year type sales. I know that stuff is kind of just going off now, but you may be able to find some of it. And at this point, should be marked down pretty good. Get yourself a nice sharp knife is one other thing that I'd like you to take with you uh, when you're out there. And again, do you need to take that when you're in the woods? It depends how far you're away from the car you are, uh, but you could take it with you and uh, get yourself a nice type of headlamp. This is an Energizer, I think, that I got from Walmart. Uh, I have some nicer ones, some, um, some nicer type flashlights that are out now, but I like this with the red. And uh, get yourself a nice headlamp, and uh, really, that's all you need as far as clothes and equipment. And again, you know how to dress, you know how to keep warm, you know how to layer up uh, as far as rain goes and all that. You know what you need. Keep it simple at first and then build the stuff up 
Again, I got clo closets full of, of camo clothes that I collected over the years. Uh, one point I do want to add, if you smoke, if you were a smoker, uh, and you're driving to the site, etc., you want to have those clothes in type, some type of container that they'll stay smoke free. And again, scent control, we'll get into a little bit of how we hunt, but you want to have a container. There are some special bags that you can have that will keep those things scent free. And then once you get to your spot, you really want to get dressed in that. If you don't smoke, it's not quite as important. There are some guys that always keep this in there and they always get dressed when they get to the site. Uh, I'm not quite a stickler on that, but if you are a smoker, uh, you definitely want to keep your clothes separate and out of the smoke. Keep it simple. That's the biggest thing that I can say about clothing and equipment. Well, this is White Rook 85 signing out uh, in the basement today. Uh, everybody have a good one.